Hello and welcome to a special episode of the MBS Show. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. In today's episode of the MBS Show, we have a super special awesome guest. Our guest is a stand-up comedian, impersonator, and voice actress. Her most notable roles are Tigress from Kung Fu Panda 2, Archie from Transformers Prime, and Spitfire from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. We are proud to bring you Annelie Heed. Yay! Hello, <laughs> Annelie. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. So let me just double check. Are all the roles that I said true? They're true. Yes. Because no lying there. Your IMDb page is kind of blank. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to fix that. Um, but it's true. Uh, those and a lot of more roles I'm voicing. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you do more, but like I think that one website called um, Behind the Voice, it just shows some. and Yeah, your... just some. I'm, I'm going to... I actually asked uh, a couple of weeks ago. I asked them to, you know, you know, I do more stuff. Um, <laughs> do you want some info? And mm. they said, yeah. So I'm gonna email them a list, but mm. I didn't get around to it. I have so much to do. Okay. Plus, your Wikipedia page is also, well, let's just say it doesn't say that you're a radio DJ. No, exactly. <laughs> yes. So before we start, um, I have to ask you the two important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Who is best pony? I love that question. <laughs> um, I well, I like Spitfire. Oh really? Now Spitfire? Um, any reason why? Oh no reason. Just <laughs> no, but she she is. I am so cool, and um, I mean the Captain of the Wonderballs. What can be better than that? True indeed, true indeed. And you also voice her. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> logically, that is best pony. Mm, it is. <laughs> okay. So, um, have you seen all of the episodes from season one, two, three, whichever way you've done it or recorded for it? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't seen much at all. So, I have lots of catching up to do, I guess. <laughs> okay. So, this next question is going to be a bit hard. So, what is your favorite episode? Sorry, um, what is... season one, two, and three. Um, the oh. ones that you watch. The ones that you watch. Oh, oh, I always say that I like Green Mr. Color from season one. Oh. Uh, and I do. But I also got a new couple of favorites. And those are the the ending, the season finale in season two with Ooh. Princess Cadence. The Crental World Wedding. That's a nice one. <clears throat> yeah, that's a really nice one. I really like the, that playing off with with a with mean and the the mean and the kind person in one person. Yeah, I know. But I love the song in that one. Oh, the song is yeah. really good. It's really good. I mean, the music, I, I'm so in love with the music. And I actually, sometimes I listen to to the music from the show because I'm, I'm in a lot of, uh, I, I mean, I, I sing a lot of the songs uh, in the Swedish version, both as Sweetie Belle and as Rainbow Dash. And then I'm, I'm in the choir, so I sing uh, all of the MLP songs that are really, you know, the ones that are really, like, at the gala, and oh, yeah. songs that are really big. So I, I, at first I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to them because they're in the, on the internet and I can listen to it before I record. Uh, have you heard any songs from the community that are remixed by... Yes, oh. I have. A little, um, some I heard. Oh, because... They're the, so good. I don't know. Yeah. There's a good song of the remix for the season finale and there's a few winter wrap-up remix and also at the gallery remix. Mm, I have to listen to that one. Uh, I'll, I'll link you on Twitter. I'll link you on Twitter. Yeah. All right. So um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. So last week we did our first April Fool's episode. And in that episode, we reviewed My Little Dashi. And to close it out, I sang a song, Proud to be a Brony. Go take a look and listen. Um, It's full of chaotic fun. And I sing really bad. <laughs> so anyway. I'm take a look. Oh. I want to see it. I want to hear it. Oh, God. Can you sing it now live? Oh. Or live I, for me? <laughs> oh, give me a second. Let me try and... I, I, I'll i just need to open up the lyrics and... Fair warning, <clears throat> my voice is pretty bad. Oh, come on. Okay, because Annelie asked... Uh, I, everybody has to suffer. <laughs> you can't refuse me. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to start. 
while ago if you would ask me what I watch in my spare time I probably wouldn't tell you what was really on my mind but lately I've been thinking of a reason I should hide if I am as mentioned it were painful when it feels so good inside why can't I mention Fluttershy in a timid loving mind how she can be herself near animals but oh god I, okay that's all I can do <laughs> good oh you're just being too nice no <sighs> Okay, if you say so. Uh, sorry, folks. I, I see pretty bad. <laughs> but you guys, you guys are not here for me. You guys are for Emily. So um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. So as you know, we have Emily Heat. Um, she's the Swedish Spitfire. Wow. And well, Emily, could you introduce yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Oh, does everyone know who I am? Unfortunately, <laughs> no. Those peasants <laughs> don't really kidding. know. A little rarity want to be there. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I do. Uh, I'm a Swedish voice actress, and I voice a lot of different characters in a lot of different shows. And uh, I do in The Model Pony. I voice, let's see, uh, Spike the Dragon, uh, Sweetie Belle, Cherry Lee, uh, the singing voice for Rainbow Dash. Um, in season one, I did uh, Photo Finish and Bon Bon. And. Um, couple of others. I hope I haven't forgot anyone. Oh, Spitfire as well. I do her as well. So, um, and then in season two, um, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually recording in the middle of the recordings of uh, season two of oh. Muddle Pony. So, uh, maybe there will be some surprises. Let me guess. Did you voice any equines in that episode? Any what? Excuse me? Ponies. Did you voice any ponies? Any ponies? Yes. Oh. <laughs> So, I voice ponies. Okay, so spoilers. <laughs> Season 2, Swedish spoilers. Finally, he voices ponies. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to believe, but yeah, I will voice some ponies in My Little Pony. <laughs> that is very vague. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. And uh, colorful ponies, yes. Mm, true, true. Colorful ponies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think we should ask the questions. Number one is, have you done any on-screen acting? Um, no, not really. Um, I've done some commercials, uh, but I'm mostly on stage uh, or in the sound studio, so that, that's what I like the most. Oh, so um, have you ever thought about going on TV or something like that? Not really, because um, I really like the privacy that you get when you're just there with your voice, and on stage, it's, it's full on. I mean, it's... it's um, Everyone can see you on stage, but um, I like to be a little bit secret, I guess. Oh, okay, okay. Because I remember that one episode you did with Osaka Jack that you mentioned about the Christmas thing on stage where your hair caught on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what I do. I go on stage and put my hair on fire. <laughs> oh, so, um, no, but but it, was a, it was a Lucia Christmas, a Christmas tradition mm. and I sang on stage because I sing on stage and I act on stage and I do comedy, stand-up comedy. Oh, so, so um, not only do you voice act and do stage acting, well, seldom do stage acting, but stage acting nonetheless, and you do stand-up comedy. How did you become a stand-up? Well, uh, I was born really funny, so, you <laughs> know what, um, I, um, I, I, I was uh, writing sketch uh, skit comedy for for one of Sweden's biggest radio stations, and I met some some stand up comedians, and they were like, "You should do this. You should try this. Do you like being on stage?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so they said, um, "Come on, let's try it on." And um, they got me a spot at a big comedy club, and I used it. So um, then I continued, and I I like it, oh. but I haven't uh, performed. Uh, real stand-up for two years because uh, I had a baby so I don't want to I don't want to take the airplane around Sweden uh, like I did before because I was you know another day another town so true true it was a lot of traveling and a lot of performances and it was really it was so much fun but uh, it's it's not really easy to do that when you have a a child yeah true it's now a stay in Stockholm yeah family always comes first for some people I can understand Yeah. yeah so you mentioned um, DJ, um, sorry, you mentioned a radio. So, do you work in radio or something like that? Uh, yeah, but not not as a typical DJ. I, I don't press buttons so, so, so the music will come on. I would love that, actually. I was like, this is the new song from... And then, and then 
to do sound comps. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I do. Uh, it, it's comedy, so um, I'm uh, I'm in the the comedy hour on the uh, Swedish Swedish national radio P3. Mm. So um, they have something called Humor Himmel. It's like uh, the, the the comedy heaven. And I'm there, and I'm actually working on a new project that will air in that same channel as well. And I found out yesterday that I can talk about it, so talking about it, here we go. Yay! I'm going to be there, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Okay, cool, cool. So, uh, what is it all about? Um, it's me and uh, a male... A male guy. <laughs> it's me and a man who's also an impersonator. So, it's me and him, only. Only us, and we... We use a lot of voices and we say a lot of, a lot of funny things, uh, crazy things, stupid things. Yeah. Oh, so basically, it's just a, like an, another another show then on radio. Yeah, it's a it's a new show with me and him. That's strange. Or I wouldn't say strange. That's special because um, here where we are, we don't have that because people want music. People come. Um, people listen to the radio for music, not to be entertained by people talking. <laughs> Oh, no, but, but we, we have those channels as well that only plays music and and just sometimes there's news and stuff. But we, especially in this, it's like um, the state radio is like, um, it's a lot of talking, but it's also music. So it's no. like it's, it, they play a song every six minutes. No, I have to balance it out, but like a pure comedy sketch show on radio, that's rare for me because I, I don't really hear any. So it's an hour thing where you spend an hour? Yeah. Yeah, it's an hour, I think. So, like, we do have sketch, but it's like a five-minute gap, just, or not really five, like, and one-minute uh, gap between um, DJs just to fill up the time, and... Ah. Yeah, it's, it's, let's just say um, it's funny, but I want more, and you're not giving more me more. Mm. Yeah. I see. Oh. Maybe they, they should start a, a radio show like that in in, um, in Malaysia, so... So you can have some more comedy. Yeah, we, we know we have comedians out there, but yeah, they're more on TV because that's where the big money is. And, and oh. yeah, let's just say Malaysian humor is not um, funny. Oh, I think it is. I mean, every country has their special kind of humor. And I think humor is also something that that's uh, around the world and that unites people. I mean, the people laughs. Uh, I mean, I think... Uh, from wherever you are, if somebody falls and it looks funny, you laugh. True, it's true. Like human instinct. That, that is true, that is true. But sometimes you also have that stupid joke where people say something and it's only for locals and it's not broad. And so you have those kind of situations too. <laughs> yeah, but all kinds of humor is lovely, I think. True, true. So, um, as long as you have a reference for it and you know what it's about, it's funny. That's true. So, uh, moving on, um, in our email conversation, you mentioned something about a big dinner comedy show? What, what's that? Could you yeah. please explain it to me? Yeah, uh, I'm in this big uh, dinner comedy show uh, in Stockholm. Uh, so, if you're Swedish and you want to come around, just go there and you will have a laugh. It's uh, actually, it's the 50s. Uh, so it's me and the four guys. So I'm the prima donna, mm-hmm. and uh, we sing and we do a little bit of dance, and then we do a lot of comedy. And I do a lot of different voices and characters. I play like I think eighteen or nineteen different characters. Wow! So um, <laughs> where is this? Because um, I know if I were in Stockholm, I would be interested in going. So, but where, where is it uh, specifically? It's at the Golden Hits uh, at the Kungsgatan in Stockholm. Oh, okay. So, what time will it, will it start? It starts uh, the 11th of April. So I'm, I'm in the middle of rehearsal right now. So, it's the 11th and um, it's 7. So, come to Golden Hits if you're in Stockholm. Just swing by. Yes, and I'll post this ASAP so everybody could go except for the ones that are not in Stockholm. Oh, I'm oh. sad right now. <laughs> oh, they can take the air. airplane. I mean, it's, it's okay. <laughs> true, true. I, I got some Emirates points to spend, so yeah, why not? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Are you a really rich Brody? Then you should take the flight to Stockholm, Sweden and go to Golden Hits and check out Annalie Heath's new comedy dinner show. Oh, Wait. available in Stockholm. Exactly. Oh boy, I love, I, I love talking to you. You're so fun. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so, um, you're fun as well. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. You're too kind. So my next set of questions is, how do you get started with voice acting? It was when I was, it was a couple of years ago, 
uh, that I did a, uh, a lot of stand-up comedy and I did a lot of voices as an impersonator. And uh, a dubbing company contacted me and they said, you know, you should really do uh, cartoon voices. Uh, have you ever thought about that? And I said, yes. And they said, do you want to try? And I said, yes. And then I went into the, stu- into the studio and then I never came out again. Oh my, so you're living in a studio now. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I'm in my home studio, so yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> it is. Oh, so um, you went from being a DJ who writes comedy and doing stand-up to voice acting. Wow, wow the progression, wow. Yeah, not a DJ per se. I, I never spin records or something like that. But I was doing stand-up and impersonations, and now I do voice acting. And uh, But I, I still keep on working with uh, with comedy and uh, impersonations. I do a lot of commercials and and uh, stuff like that as well. Oh, yeah. Well, th- that's cool because, like I said, the f- your progression, it's it's there if you know what to look for, but from uh, radio to theater to live shows to stand-up and to voice acting, yeah. wow, you're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there are just so many fun things to do and I, I could never settle for just doing one thing because there's too much fun going on. And if there's fun going on, I want to be a part of the fun. True, true. Everybody wants to be a part of fun. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm <laughs> that's doing what this. We learned today. <laughs> true indeed. That's, that's why I'm doing this because it's fun. Ah, you see? You see? True, Perfect. True. So um, some people might say that you're the Angelina Jolie of Sweden. Ah, yes, I always call myself that. <laughs> so um, how did you get the role for Tigress from Kung Fu Panda 2? Because... Um, how did you got it? And were you excited when you got the role? Oh, um, let's see. I At first, there was another girl uh, voicing her in Sweden uh, in, in the first movie. And then they called me because she moved or something. And they called me and asked me if I could do a trailer voice uh, just to, to stand in for her. And they said, the, the part is not yours. It's just um, a, a trailer. And you're just lending it. And it, she, she's going to do it, you know, in the second movie. I said, yeah, sure, fine. And I went there and I recorded the trailer. And then half a year later, there was another trailer. And they said, oh, yeah, you you are uh, you, you can do it again. And then when they was about to record, they called me and they said, uh, they're thinking of giving you the part, but they're not really sure. Uh, they're, they're thinking about it because they uh, sometimes... Uh, in the dubbing industry, they want names, big, uh, bigger, bigger actor, actors' names on screens, on on screen actor names. So they were like, "Ah, oh, we're not really sure." But then they called me and they said, "Okay, so uh, DreamWorks, they they picked you because you did it the best." So I was very very happy to oh, get congratulations that. because uh, I heard from a few voice actors out there who did. Um, movies like um, example um, Kung Fu Panda they say that oh um, we are professional voice actors we do this for a living why do you give it to celebrity A or celebrity B exactly exactly I mean sometimes a celebrity voice can be good if they know how to voice act but sometimes it's just not so they don't know the craft and uh, it's just for a name on a poster and it's too bad but this time they uh, they they chose the right one (laughs) Yeah. I'm so happy that they could look past the the thing that I wasn't that famous. <laughs> oh, you you are you are slowly I'm you a are. A bit famous. <laughs> so uh, here's an interesting question: um, When Kung Fu Panda two, you did the voice for the trailer. Was it at the same time worldwide launch, or was it for dubbing later on, or how does it work? Because in my mind, like the Americans, they do everything first with the script and voice and distribute the movie. But for other countries, um, how would that work? Um, the trailer is always the first to record. So it's, it's always first the trailer and then maybe one half a year or maybe one whole year you do the movie. Oh, so the movie comes out first and then you do the dub later on? Oh, no. Uh, the movie comes out uh, in English and in Swedish at the same time. Ah, so basically... Yeah. Uh, you got spoilers then. You know what's going on. Yes. Ah. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, interesting. that's a, interesting. A little bit, because I, I never get to see the whole movie. I just get to see my lines. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen. And it was so much fun because I went to the big premiere. And and in the end, I'm sorry to spoil it. If you haven't seen Kung Fu Panda, just cover your ears. Um, 
because in the end she is she's hurt and I didn't remember if I had any lines after that so I was like oh no oh no they're they're killing her off and oh this is one of my biggest roles and no she's not gonna be in the third movie and oh no I don't know oh why do they do this and I was like no kind of upset but then I had one more line like like I'm here I'm alive something like that and I was like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so you, you forgot the line then? Wow, oh my. Yeah, because I can't remember all the lines. So I was like, oh no, what are they doing to my sweet tigress? No. Well, I, I believe... So I was like wh- whispering to my husband, oh, oh no. <laughs> He's like, okay, come on, maybe I have some more lines. I don't know, but I don't think I have. <laughs> oh my. Because I, I get so in love. I, 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 I'm so in love with all my characters. I really, I, I have my little connections to them. And I really... I really like them, and I, I always buy buy the the toys. So I have this big shelf with a lot of toys of characters that I voiced. So wow, so. That, that is that is a shelf that I want to have of, of my own one day, buying mm. toys that I voice for. Yeah, it's it's a good thing to have. If you had a rainy day, you just look at that little shelf and like, oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I must be good at something. <laughs> oh, you're 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 talented. You're very talented. So, um, he, I, I'm not sure if there's a difference, but is there a difference between dubbing for a movie and a TV show? Does, is there a difference between them? Mm, no, there is not. But if, uh, well, sometimes uh, when, when you do a movie, you always have uh, a director. But when you're dubbing TV shows, uh, like half of the time, you don't have a director. You just uh, you make it on your own and you have your sound engineer. So... Oh. So in a movie you have a director and a sound engineer, yeah. and you're all yeah. alone in the in the booth. Yep. Oh, okay. So, oh, but yeah. in TV it's just you and the sound director. Sorry, um, the sound engineer. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. So, how do they manage to standardize everything to make everything sound official or sound good? Because to me, a sound director is really important. Yeah, um, I mean, if the, if it's a new actor doing a, a, a TV uh, series, they, I mean, they, they they can maybe give a, give a little bit of direction, but a lot of the times they take uh, skilled people who know who who has been in the in the voice acting game for a long time, and they they know how to direct themselves. So, uh-huh. so they, I mean, we, we we can hear how it's how it's gonna be. So, so um, no. in the studio where you record the. Dubbing. Do you play one with the English and you record it at the same time? Yeah, oh. exactly. Ah. So sometimes you can listen to the line in English first and then record it. Uh, but sometimes you just you just jump on it and at the same time as the English voice is speaking, you're speaking. So. Oh, that's going to be difficult. Um, how- no. Really? No. <laughs> you get used to it. Oh, okay. And you get to know your characters. Well, moving on to my next set of questions. They're pony related. So people who are here for ponies, you'll enjoy this. <laughs> Indeed. Um, what was your reaction when you heard about the Brony fandom? I was very surprised and so happy because I really think that if you enjoy something, it, it shouldn't matter what gender gender you are or what age you are or who you are. It's just if you enjoy something and you find others who enjoys it, just enjoy it together. I mean, wow, it's just wonderful, and there's so much love in the Brony community. So and, and a lot of creativity. So I was thrilled. Okay, so um, here's another question. When you first got into ponies, did you know about it beforehand or were you just in it just because it's a job? Um, I'm never in it because it's a job uh, per se because I, I always fall in love with every every production I'm in. So I was very happy when I first started with the Metal Pony because I had Generation 1 ponies when I was a kid. And I really loved those. And I had the, the whole stable and I had a Lemon Drop and a, a, oh Surprise I had. And I had a, a Gusty. So I was so happy. So it was very, very cool for me to go into the studio and, and watch My Little Pony. Just mm-hmm. because of that, so I, I didn't know anything about about the bronies. I was just happy to to uh, to voice some ponies. And the funny thing was that um, <laughs> the first thing I did was actually uh, MLP um, G G three, if I remember right. You did yeah, something 3.5. with okay. Uh, 
not the not not the newborn cuties. It was it was uh, little baby souls, and I was Scootaloo. Ooh. Uh, yeah, and and then uh, when Prince. Precious Magic came. Uh, I went to, into the studio and I was so happy. I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, my maybe my, my little Scootaloo will be in this too." And then they said, "Oh no, no, you're not gonna play her." But oh, okay, well, okay. So I'm gonna play some other pony, some sweet pony, maybe some pink pony, maybe some. And they're like, "No, you, you, you're gonna be a guy." And I was like, "Okay, a guy. I I can work with that. I, I mean, I'm used to voicing guys. So I can do that." Okay, so which, which pony is it? Uh, you're gonna be a dragon. And I was like, "Oh." Oh, it, oh! I see. Okay. Well, well, the dragon, the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> and no. then, and then, um, I got, I got the other ponies as well uh, later on, but not in the first uh, half of season one. A other person did, did uh, mm-hmm. voice the ponies that I got later on. Oh, so, so um, I don't know why I got them. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Um, you didn't do Shirley first. No. Oh, really? No. Not you... Sweetie Belle. No, and no, no other ponies. Only Spike. Oh, really? No, uh, because... And I have no idea why I got all of the other ponies. I have no idea, and I'm not going to ask them because I'm so happy. <laughs> well, because um, according to the Wikipedia page, they say that you got Sweetie Belle on episode 18, and um, Shirley was out of the gate, right? Oh, uh, Shirley, I got... Oh, I can't remember, but it was not the first... The first and second time you see her, it's not me. Uh, but then it is, so... I have no idea. Uh, hmm. Why? I just came there one day, uh, and they said, "Oh, you're gonna do this one as well, uh, and this one, and this one. Well, let's do this one. Want to do this one? Yeah, this one." <laughs> oh, okay. So that, that's an interesting way of doing stuff. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but I'm so happy. So I, I'm never gonna ask them why. I'm just gonna roll with it. <laughs> True indeed. And let's just hope they remember that. Hey, I did Shirley. I did Bon Bon. Oh, they do because I remind them now when I get into the studio for season two. I'm like, um, you know, um, he, uh, I do this one, this one. So you don't confuse him and give it to someone else. You don't do that, huh? And they're like, no, we know who you play. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> don't keep my babies away. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, if I remember right about the generation three, um, Shirley and Scootle were sisters, right? Um, were they? I can't remember. Maybe, yeah. Well, um. Funny thing, you did Scootaloo and you did Shirley in G4, so yay! Yeah, <laughs> I know, and Sweetie Belle, and I think she was there. Was Sweetie Belle in, in the G.3.5 uh, as well? I think so. Yeah, the the babies. Uh. Yeah, uh, no, not the newborn babies. <laughs> um, I think she's in there too, because if there's a newborn baby... Uh, uh. A horror. <laughs> the the, the 3.5 was just all bad. Like, I, I bet you... As a voice actress, you were ashamed of that one. I'm not ashamed of anything that I voice. No. Uh, just looking at it. The 3.5 no. babies. The babies one. No. Really? No. Oh. No. Because, I mean, they're ponies. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, oh boy. I mean, it's because they look funny. You shouldn't make fun of them. Uh, it's true, but, but I'm not making I fun did, of them. I, I didn't do the, the, the newborn babies. I, did, I didn't voice those. I did... I did the webisodes when Scootaloo is going on with the skateboard and stuff, so it was not the newborn babies I did. Oh, the Ferris Wheel Adventures, yes. Pinkie Pie's yeah. Ferris Wheel Adventures. Oh, yes, okay. well, that, that's not newborn. They, they have new diapers. Oh, no, never They're mind. They're like school, school kids. Well, mm, it, it doesn't say on your, um, what's this, uh, behind the voice actors page. They need to update it. Oh, gosh. I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe someone kind will do it. I can send a list. Well, if somebody knows how to do, you could send it to them. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so um, the next question is, um, how did your friends react when you got popular by the way of ponies? Um, they got very surprised and, and happy, and I was like, you have to, you have to, you have to watch this show because uh, I really, really love the ponies, and I want you to understand what they love uh, about the show, so you can understand why I love them. Do you follow me? <laughs> So I forced a lot of my friends to watch <laughs> the ponies, and some of them were kind of hard to 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 get to sit down and watch. Uh, they were like, "No, no, it's it's this kids show," and I was like, "No, it's not. Just sit here <laughs> and you know, watch the ponies." And they were like, "Okay, okay, okay." Oh, <laughs> no, I wasn't that harsh. Um, yes, I was, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but but I mean, they they liked it, and uh, but I haven't I haven't got anyone to be uh, I haven't. 
managed to get anyone to be a brony yet, but I have two friends, no, three friends, one guy and two girls, and they have watched. Actually, they maybe they are bronies now because they have watched uh, season one and season two. Ooh. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, all of it. And they're like, yeah, I started to watch the Swedish version because I want to see what you did. I want to hear you, and and then I mean, uh, the show was so good, so I started, you know, and then you didn't have more in Swedish, so I went to the English one and I watched the whole show, and I was like, good, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> My plan is working. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, wow. Funny for them to say um, they're working in the voice acting industry. It's funny for them to say, like, oh, it's a show for kids. Yeah, it's a show for kids, but it's done by adults. Yeah, and, yeah. and for adults as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, primarily it was for girls, I know, but, I mean, everyone can enjoy it. I mean, age, gender, and everything doesn't matter, because if you like it, like it. Yeah. So. As somebody said to me once, there's no age limitation for good. No, exactly. That's a good, that's a good word. It's true. So, um, uh, to recap here, um, you did Spitfire, you did Spike, Sweetie, Belle, Cheer Lee for the finish, Bon Bon, and sing the voice for Rainbow Dash. Um, how do you develop so many voices? I have always been experimenting a lot with my voice since I was a little girl, and uh, I used to, to try to sound like my teachers, and uh, it got me in trouble a lot of times. <laughs> uh, and I always, I love accents, and I love languages, and different voices. It's just something very natural to me. I always do fun little sounds, and I never think about it. People in my, people that are close to me, they're like, oh, you're never quiet. You always, you always <laughs> do little sounds, and if I'm in, 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 in a queue waiting for... <laughs> you know, at the bank or something or at the store and I'm with a friend and, you know, two minutes passes by and it's quiet. I'm like, we're <laughs> 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 like, oh, she's doing it again. <laughs> That's because something needs to happen and, and I, I guess I have a, a knack for, for doing different voices and I really love it. Sometimes when I was younger, I used to, to if, if I heard something that, oh, I want to, I want to sound like that, I, I could rehearse and really, try to to do that but now it's it just comes to me oh because i'm so used to listening to myself that that's cool like you just do it and it's there like oh i want to sound like dusty cat so it's done (laughs) he would be kind of hard to sound like (laughs) i can't um i set my limits too (laughs) i can't i can't do voices uh uh, guy i mean uh man (laughs) man, men's voices I, i can do boys and teenage guys yeah but not not older men not, not, not men and not older men. Okay, so basically I no dusty then. I need to call dusty an older man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I need to do that. <laughs> oh. I called him a man. <laughs> oh, he's a manly man. <laughs> he's a manly man. Yes. So uh, you said about accent. So as I remember, photo finish, Tabitha St. Germain said that she got the inspiration from her Austrian neighbor. And yeah, it's kind I heard that of, uh, So, um... An Austrian accent. Basically, she talked photo finish with an Austrian accent. So, did you use that or did you just use something else? No, I used that as well. Um, I listened to her and I, I mean, I had her in my headphones and I, uh, I know how to do that accent. I, I don't know why, but I, I knew how to, how to do it and I, I did it. <laughs> wow. So you it just <laughs> comes to me. You were at Galacon, right, last year? Yes, I was. So, did anybody uh, told you that, oh, why did you sound Swedish? I'm sorry, why did you sound Austrian for photo finish? Did they ask you or did they all know about it? Uh, they knew about it. So, uh, they knew about it and they liked it. So, it was oh. good. But I think it's really important to, to, to listen. If you have a genuine interest of listening, really deep listening to, to everything, that is said in special accents and stuff. I mean, if, if I meet something, uh, something, if I meet someone and she is having a, a really big accent, sometimes I start, I start to listen to how she speaks instead of what she's speaking about. So, uh, because I'm so, I really like that, the accents and stuff. And then, if you hear, if, if, if you listen that close to something, it gets stuck in your head and then you can repeat it because you know, you, it's like solving a little puzzle, you know, okay, so that piece is going to be there, that there, okay, and then you try it and oh, it sounds like that one. Oh, great. Now I can use it. Oh, okay, that's interesting because 
I kind of want to do accents, but where I am, the only accent I have is my own, and I don't know how to do a Malay accent when talking in English because uh, let's just say I don't pick it up, and Malay accent for English is kind of bad. I haven't heard it. Never ever. I want to hear it. No, it's kind of well. I'm speaking in English right now, and I'm Malay, so that logically says that I should have a Malay accent, but. No, uh, I'm kind of good at English, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to explain how a Malay accent is. I even try to copy it or try to re- try to hear it a lot of times, but no, I I don't know. Um, maybe there's a lot of ums and ahs in Malay accents because they're not so confident in talking English. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry that I can't explain how a Malay accent works. But, uh, I'm sorry. No, I think, I, think I, I, I have a little slight idea. Okay, maybe one day I'll trap a friend into recording something and he'll do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Um, okay, wow, we're almost done. So, um, before we go, I have some more questions. <laughs> <laughs> So, what was your reaction when you were first invited onto the MBS show? It was, wow, it's in Malaysia, cool! Because uh, I mean, it's so cool when you're in, I mean, every every show is cool, but it's a little bit of extra cool when it's in a country that I don't know much about. I mean, I was a guest at Osaka Jack's show uh, in Japan and some other show, uh, but I mean, it's it's so cool that it spreads around the world. Uh, I get so happy when I see that, that the Brony fandom spreads around the world. True, because um, as for me, I would have never imagined me myself talking to a celebrity like, for um, example, you. I, I wouldn't imagine in oh. uh, all my life I would talk to a celebrity like, wow, I'm talking to a celebrity. Ah! <laughs> oh, well. Wow, well, um, uh, once again, thank you for being on because my mind is blurred right now. Oh, thank you for asking me. <laughs> so, um, has. Nice to see her. So has the internet changed the way you interact with your fans? Yeah, because I never used Skype. As of last summer, um, I'm using Skype. And uh, as of last summer, I'm using Twitter. And I never did that before. So, And I also have my little fa- Facebook fan page. So I didn't use those three, those, those three channels before. But now I do. So back then, do you have any fans or any followings? Um, on uh, where? Um for your works, like um, in your stand-up comedy or your radio work before, or oh yes, I have. Yep, I get some sweet emails and uh, and stuff. So yeah. Uh, so, but now with Twitter, Facebook, Skype, you're getting even more. And oh my, I could just yeah. imagine. I could just imagine the craziness happening. <laughs> I like the craziness. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so much fun, and and I'm so happy to to be recognized for what I do. That that that's so nice to that people appreciate what I do, and especially that people appreciate what I do in Swedish <laughs> when they're not from Sweden. That is just amazing. So so I'm so happy and grateful for my fans. True, because um, as a Malaysian here, we do tend to have our own local dubs and stuff, and well. I'm guessing that they don't feel the love that most what you have because nobody recognizes them. They know them as just oh he voices this character on TV. That's about it. And yeah, Malaysians have no love for their voice actors. It's pretty sad. Uh, in Sweden, it's it's kind of the same, but it's getting better. I think. I mean, I have a contact with a lot of Swedish really sweet bronies, and I think people are gonna change. <laughs> I think they're they're gonna like the Swedish dub better. I think. I hope so, because we all put a lot of love in it, and I mean, I'm the biggest nerd, so <laughs> I always put down a lot of love, whatever I do, but especially for the ponies, I mean, the uh, the sound engineer is like, when I when I come into the studio, I'm like, today we're going to do some ponies, and it's like, yeah, wow, you're happy, I mean, I'm extra happy, <laughs> oh, yeah. so I go in there kind of like Pinkie Pie, <laughs> I'm so oh, thrilled and happy to, to dub the ponies, because it's it's, it's kind of very special, special to me. Oh, that's cool. So, um, one, uh, one thing, one thing. Okay. I know everything 
about the show. So when when they have to ask something, like, oh, do you know about this? Do you know if this character is going to come back? Like, like, yeah, 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 because uh, <laughs> I know so much about the show. <laughs> I know more of the show than than uh, than everyone else. So <laughs> I'm the right person at the right place <laughs> at the right time. Yay! Yeah, we. So um, something re- um. Something something you said reminded me of a question before. So, um, with all the bronies watching you and judging every work you do in ponies, does it put any pressure on you to make the show sound right? I'm feeling quite confident, so... No, not pressure, no. I don't think so, but especially when, when I'm singing the songs, I feel a little bit extra because I love the show so much and the songs so much, and I really want to make them justice, so I'm very... Uh, I, I take out the harmonies before I go to the studio to record because I mean it's on YouTube so I, I can find it yeah. and, and on, on other shows I, I just, it's, it's not on YouTube so I can't but now when I can I always take out the harmonies and I go to the studio and they're like you don't have to do this you know you, you do this on your spare time and I'm like yes I do yes <laughs> so I know how the harmonies are going to sound so I don't have to stand there and pick the harmonies out I just know how it is and that gives me extra time to do extra good the work you do for your fans it's really awesome <laughs> well so you do a lot of singing right for the show um, uh, yes. you did the singing for Rainbow Dash in season 1 from start to end yes oh so um, how singing her line is like is, is it any fun oh yeah of course it is I mean wow every bit of music there is just so good and uh, it's really funny to to sing Rainbow Dash as well because uh, I have to match my voice to the to the voice actor who's, who's speaking her. So I have to make it a little bit, oh well, not deeper, but I have to have another style and another color in my voice. So that's always fun. Oh, okay, because like it, um, as far as I know, for the original English dub. Ashley Ball plays Rainbow Dash and Applejack, and she sings both of her lines. So for yeah. her, it's kind of, okay, I can sing and um, talk at the same time, no problem. But for you, I, I remember something. You need to match the voice with the person who's dubbing it. So ooh, Yeah, okay. and I can say that that was really, that was, uh, yeah, <laughs> when we did the song about the favorite pet. Ooh. Because she, she, she talks... In that song, when she's having she's having a duet with Fluttershy, and uh, it's a duet, so they sing about the favorite pets, and then she talks in the middle of it, and then she starts singing again, and then she talks again and singing. So, so like, basically, Whoa. basically, you sing all the parts, and she talks all the parts. Yeah. Oh, oh that, that's going to be hard. Uh, yeah, we recorded a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, so I'm really excited to see how the result was. Oh, I, I wish it's out, because I want to listen, because... Um, oh, you can, later on. It will be on YouTube. Well, I hope so, because um, recently the Japanese uh, aired their first episode of the Japanese dub, and wow, was it good. Was it? Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm so curious. I want to see it. Uh, I, I'll link you later. I'll link you later if I can oh. find it. Because in, in, in Sweden, we have a, a guy called Dennis Fluttershy, and he puts everything up. So, oh. yeah. That's cool. I, I need to check it out, because um, I like to hear every rendition. Like, the uh-huh. the favorite pet song is one of my favorites for season two, and how they sing it. That's, it's that's a my... good song. No, I want to listen how you take it on. <laughs> but I, I don't know when it's going to be released, so... I have no idea. Actually, yeah, just have to wait. On TV. <laughs> just have to wait then. Yeah. So um, let's see what's next. Ah, okay, as a very talented actress, how do you kick back and relax? I don't. Oh, God, no. <laughs> not not right now when I have the rehearsals for the show and the radio show and uh, the dubbing and two more projects that are secret. Uh, so right now I don't. <laughs> oh, but when I kick back and relax, I do it with friends. And uh, we just go out, have a nice dinner, or um, uh, I went to the gym for some yoga today, this morning. It's 11 o'clock in Sweden right now, so I went there this morning. That's also relaxation, so that's what I do. Oh, so basically, you hang out with friends and go to the gym and exercise. You relax like any other normal person. Oh, wow. yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. People um, think that voice actress relax by not talking. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, I <laughs> I had one of those days 
three weeks ago, I uh, I was quiet for a whole day because I did so much voice work. So I thought, oh, I, I gotta save, I gotta save the voice for tomorrow's sessions. So some days I, I take a quiet day, but it's it's kind of hard when you have a two and a half year old running around. He's like, mommy, why are you not talking? Why are you not talking, mommy? <laughs> so that's kind of hard. <laughs> wow. I feel like the little mermaid. I'm like, just ring with my hands and <laughs> do that. <laughs> oh. oh. Boy, I could just imagine, well, two and a half years old, because right now uh, I'm currently uh, with a one-month-old uh, baby. I'm an uncle right now, so I'm an uncle to a one-month-old baby, so I got no idea how bad it's going to become, but I can just imagine. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, she's used to that I'm talking all the time, and she's just like me. <laughs> she's my little girl, so, <laughs> so she's talking all the time. And then when I'm not talking suddenly, she's like, Mommy! Speak, mommy, mommy, quiet, speak. Oh, boy. And he's like, I have to say my voice. Oh, boy. Then does she ask, why do you need to say for your voice? Yeah, and then I can't answer. So <laughs> I just point at an ice cream and I give it to her. It's like nothing. Uh, ice cream always <laughs> solves any problem. Yay. Yay. Oh. Ice cream. Oh, cool. So, um... And the last one is, um, do you have any questions for me? Um, <laughs> oh, of course I have. Oh Who's my. best pony? Ah, well, best pony um, for me personally you don't is... Have to say, say <laughs> oh. You don't have to. oh, okay. Well, um, let me just answer it. Best main six is Fluttershy. And, well, my favorite is Fluttershy. And I do kind of like Derpy because she's kind of for the fans, but... As for my favorite Wonderbolts, Spitfire. Oh, great! <laughs> um, I really like Fluttershy as well. Um, she's so cute, and she, she's so she's so um, far from how I am as a person. So, I mean, she's like really nice and quiet, and when she speaks, she's like very, you know, like she's like a butterfly. <laughs> oh, so cute! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh boy, so cute! I I can't. Wow! Oh oh my! <laughs> oh oh my! Okay, I I need to regain my composure again. <laughs> oh oh! Uh, I could have been heart attack at that time. <laughs> oh boy! So anyway, okay. Um. So uh, my favorite pony is Fluttershy and Spitfire and Derby. Oh boy! Yay! So um. Fire Derby. <laughs> Fluttershy derp, fire. No. Wow, the, those combinations of names. Wow. Oh, oh I'm, I'm getting derpy just thinking about it. What the combination name is going to be? Hmm. Oh yeah, somebody paid that. Oh, I, it'll be out soon when this um, episode goes up on EQD or the Pew of News or wherever it's going to be posted. <laughs> So anyway, um, that was my Q&A session with Annalie Heed. And moving on to the next topic is shout-outs. So my shout-out goes to you, Annalie. Thank you so much oh. for being on the show and being so awesome. Thank you for inviting me. Um, do I have any shout-outs? Yes, I have. Um, just because we talked about it before, the man, I have to give a shout-out to Dusty Cat. Hi! <laughs> And then I heard that there's a guy called Daniel, and he was supposed to be in this show, but he's not here. So I gave a shout out to him. Hi! Oh, he's <laughs> going to be so happy. Oh, good. But I don't have any more shout outs. Um, do I? Oh, there, there, there's so many. There's so many shout outs I'm going to make, but I am afraid I'm going to forget people. So just shout out for everybody. Yay, shout, shout out for everybody. Awesome. Awesomeness, awesomeness. <laughs> If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email me personally, my personal email is norman at thembsshow.com. And Twitters. Yes, we are on Twitter. Um, I'm at Norman Sanzo. The show is at the MBS Show. And Annalie, do you have Twitter? Yes, I do. It's just my name, Annalie. Cool. I'll add in to the show notes. So, Yay. and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like our Facebook page. So, that has been this special episode. I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Annalie Heath. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.
So, before we end it, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at uh, the sorry, um, shows. You can contact. Um, I'm going to take this from the top. I derp. <laughs> it's okay. Three, two, one. 